I'm Pastor Darrell, and we do welcome you this morning to, to Pine Grove, and we are glad that uh, you could join us for service this morning as we try to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We've been through so much here in the last uh, few months, and just so much going on. There's so much sorrow, so much suffering, so much pain. But I've come to let you know this morning that God's eye is upon you and that God is concerned about his people. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that God is concerned about you? Amen. Let's pray before we get started. Oh, gracious God, we do thank you, Lord, for, for today. God, we thank you for uh, your amazing grace. So amazing that it will save folks like us. God, we thank you for your son and for his precious blood. Father, we thank you for the guarantee of life beyond death. So, Father God, we glory in that knowledge this morning. Father, we pray as we come together in this sacred space that you, our God, would uh, grant us a special endowment of the awareness of your presence. We know, God, that you're always with us because you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. But God, we need to feel you this morning. God, we need to feel you this morning. Just grant us that, God, that we might feel your presence like never before. We pray, God, that your word will go forth from this mountain. That it will be an on-time word, and there will be nothing but your word. We pray, oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be more than acceptable in your sight. We ask it in the strong and mighty, awesome name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen and amen, amen, amen. This morning, I would like to uh, talk from the simple subject, and I on the sparrow, and I on the sparrow. Our scripture this morning comes to us from uh, the gospel recorded by Matthew chapter 10. We'll start there at verse 29 and we're reading from uh, the ESV. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Isn't that such a beautiful scripture? I know it's familiar, but isn't that just so beautiful that God says to us, are you not of more value than many sparrows? Yes. God does have an eye this morning on the sparrow. To appreciate our, our text for this morning, we have to be able to appreciate the context. Chapter 10 of the gospel recorded by Matthew begins with the calling of the twelve. The Bible says that he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the 12 apostles of these, first Simon, who's called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Verse 5 of chapter 10 tells us that Jesus sends out the 12 apostles. He tells them to go nowhere among the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim as you go, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He gives them instructions to, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse lepers, to cast out demons. He tells them that they have received without paying and give without paying. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts. Take no bag for your journey. 
just two tunics or sandals or a staff for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town you go into, if they're worthy, you stay there. But if they reject you, shake the dust from your feet and move on. Truly, I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. And then, beginning in chapter, I mean, verse 16 of chapter 10, Jesus begins to talk to his disciples about persecution that was ahead. He said, behold, I'm sending you as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. But verse 19 says, when they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it's not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will deliver brother over to death and the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And when they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For I truly say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And the disciple is not above his teacher, nor servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house the elders above, how much more will they malign those of his household? And so Jesus says to them, don't be afraid. So fear, so have no fear of them for nothing is covered that would not be revealed or hidden, that would not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Verse 29, look at that. Oh, we hear this verse so often, and we usually hear it only as an isolated verse or two, but on the heels of all of that, the persecution to come, the encouragement to have no fear, Jesus says to them, are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus was sending his disciples out into a cold, harsh world. Is there anybody out there who can testify with me that the world can get cold, it can be harsh, it can be cruel, it can be evil, it can be hateful? And yet Jesus sends us out, the church out, into this old sin sick, cold, and cruel world. And he says, have no fear. For not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Not one of them will fall to the ground without the father's knowledge and his implied permission. The Bible has many illustrations about birds. And um, I think over, th over uh, uh, 300 or something about birds. And, but usually the birds that are, are, are mentioned are the fowl of the air. 
the raven, the dove, the turtle dove, the beautiful majestic eagle, beautiful body, beautiful long wingspan, excellent eyesight. Oh, that beautiful majestic eagle, our national bird. But here, in giving encouragement to his disciples for the future journey. Jesus does not speak of the raven, does not speak of the majesty of the eagle, but Jesus speaks of the helplessness of the sparrow. Jesus speaks of the, of a poor, valueless sparrow. And he says to his disciples, not even one of them falls from the sky without the Father knowing about it. I think that's it's such a beautiful, beautiful illustration to us this morning. Jesus is, is telling us that unlike man, God cares for the sparrows. God cares for those who sometimes feel like they have no value. God cares for those that the world says has no value. I don't know. I cannot know. I'm not a bird. I cannot know. You cannot know. I do not know what it's like in the bird world. In the bird world, do they all admire the peacock with his beautiful feathers? Do they look at the eagle and say, oh, I wish I were an eagle? Or do they look at the mystique of the raven and say, oh, I wish I were a raven? We don't know. I think that if birds were humans, they would because that's what we do. We give value to some men and we give little to no value to others. That's the human way. Sometimes we will admire other people more than we admire ourselves. Sometimes we will praise others and then we will critically critique ourselves. I don't know what other birds thought about the lowly sparrow, but I know what God thinks about the sparrow. God thinks so much about the little sparrow that he keeps an eye on him and her. Every now and then I'll be driving down, down the highway and a bird will hit against my windshield or the front of the car. And even though it was just a bird, and even though it was not my intention to kill them or to injure them, I feel pain when, as that bird crashes against my windshield. I feel pain because I understand that that bird has value to God as one of his many beautiful creations. The lowly sparrow, a bird without a lot of respect, a bird who in that culture, or even today, was not considered to be of much value, had value to God. According to my, to my studies, the, the sparrow is one of the most common creatures on earth, one of the most common birds on earth. In the days of Christ, the sparrow was very common. 
The poorest of the Israelites will consume sparrows for food. In our text today, the writer tells us that you can get two sparrows for a penny. Two sparrows for the lowest valued corn they had. One writer said farthings. Some said serious. It was the lowest corn in the Roman Empire. You could get two sparrows for that low corn. Luke adds the footnote in chapter 12 that you could buy five sparrows for two pennies. In other words, they were so valueless that they would throw in the fifth one free. And yet, God says to us, my eye is on the sparrow. I think that the disciples would have understood the message as Jesus uh, sent them out, some to be killed, crucified, tortured, beaten, mocked, scorned. And Jesus says to them, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of those that persecute you, those, those that can kill the body but cannot touch the soul. Don't be afraid. I say to you this morning, Pine Grove, right now in 2020, in the midst of a pandemic that can kill and can destroy, in the midst of economic crisis that can destroy and can take, Jesus still says the same thing. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You may not be the grandest of birds. You may not live in a mansion. You may not live uh, in the risky side of town. You may not have a glamour job. You, you may not have a title. You may not have a degree. You may not have any of that. You may not even have any money. But I got good news for you. God's eye is on you and he will defend you. I started studying this week from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. You know it. If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. And from that, I found myself in, in 2 Chronicles in chapter 16, I believe it is, and uh, verse 9 that, that, that speaks of uh, the eye of God being on those who are completely, perfectly bent toward him. Then I was reminded of the story of Hagar that we will consider at another time, that, that, that God's eye was upon her in the midst of her affliction. And then I found myself here that likewise God's eye is on the sparrow the least of us, God watches over us. So this morning, you may have a lot of anxiety, a lot of pain. You may feel some degree of helplessness and hopelessness, but God sees you. He sees you because you have value to him. But take note that as Jesus sent his disciples into the world to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, he gave them the warning that life would not be easy. He told them that life would be difficult. He told them that life would not be a crystal stair, but it's full of tacks. It's full of splinters. 
but he comforts them for the journey by allowing them to understand that he was watching over them. And this watchful eye of God is not just watching as in seeing, but watching as in, as in present with them. So yes, he values them. He values the sparrow. And yes, the sparrow may fall. I don't want anybody here listening to me to think that you won't have some heartache and some pain and some loss in your life. You will have it. Jesus said it. Now, even one sparrow falls without the father, you will fall. There will be some difficult days ahead. In every life, in every life. But the father knows. The father knew when the sparrow fell. The father knew before the sparrow fell. The father knew where the sparrow fell. And God knows each of us. You just heard the praise team sing it. He knows my name. Oh, how you comfort me. Oh, how you counsel me. <laughs> it still amazes me, the writer said, that I am your friend. And then one of those verses said, I won't walk in fear. <laughs> I won't walk in fear. Because the Father has said that I cannot fall without his knowledge. And that knowledge implies his permissive will. So Jesus says to the disciples, God watches over you as the Father watches over the sparrow. And then it goes on to say that the number uh, of the hairs upon our heads are numbered. I don't know if there's any real purpose in knowing the number of hairs upon an individual's head. But what I do know is that in order to know that, it takes a very intimate knowledge of that person. And what that says to me is that God knows me inside out. And it says to you, he knows you likewise. He knows your weaknesses, your strengths, successes, your failures. He knows your joys. He knows your sorrows. He knows your jubilation. He knows your pain. He knows it all. He knows it all. A poet named Elizabeth Cheney wrote a poem about the robin and the sparrow. Said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, friend, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. We do have a heavenly father who watches over us, one who loves us and will love us through it. He will love us through our pain. He will love us through our sorrow. He will love us even when one of our sparrows fall. He will love us through it. 
most of you have heard uh, the song is become a hymn of the church. Popular in recent years, but it's an old, old song, I think back in the early 1900s. It's been made popular by many artists, Mahalia Jackson, uh, um, Arthur Waters is sang with the Billy Graham Crusade. Many, many, many have, have sung this song entitled His Eye is on the Sparrow. That song was written by um, a Canadian lady who, who got educated in Nova Scotia. I think she was born in, in, in mid 1860s or something. And she uh, married a man who was a Baptist preacher, itinerant preacher. And um, one day they had a chance to to visit a couple um, in New York. The couple uh, was named Doolittle, Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle. They were devoted people. They loved God. But their, their life wasn't easy. They had a difficult life. Mrs. Doolittle had been bedridden for about 20 years, bedridden for 20 years. Her husband was a cripple that could not be cured and he would prepare himself to and fro in his wheelchair to do the, the work of God. The writer of the song said that despite their afflictions, they live happy Christian lives, bringing inspiration and comfort to all who knew them. So one day while they were visiting with the Doolittles, uh, the writer and her husband uh, commented about their bright hopefulness. They just couldn't understand how could they be so peaceful in the midst of all of the pain and all of the suffering. They wanted to know their secret. As the story goes, Mrs. Doolittle's reply was simple. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. The beauty of that simple expression, the faith of that simple expression. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know. I know. He watches over us. So, Pine go whatever you're going through this morning, whether it's sickness. Whether it's grief over the loss of a loved one, financial hardship, financial distress, marital discord, or just anxiety that just has gotten a grip on you and won't let you go. And you find yourself worrying and worrying and worrying and you don't even know why you're worrying, but you're just worrying and you're worrying and you're worrying. Good news from Matthew chapter 10. Don't be afraid. God has an eye on you. I know how you feel. Some days you feel like no one respects you. No one values you. No one is thinking about you. No one is concerned about you. And sometimes you feel like you're all alone. 
you don't have a friend in this whole wide world. But you have a friend. His name is Jesus. And he can relate to how you feel. He can relate to your pain. He can relate to your suffering and to your sorrow. He can even relate to that, that feeling of a aloneness, that feeling of isolation, that, that feeling of helplessness and despair. 2,000 years ago, one Friday, on a hill they called Calvary, for my sin and for your sin, for the sin of the whole wide world, he hung he bled until he died. And there, just before his death, he felt the isolation that came with carrying our sins and bearing our sins, bearing our burdens. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. And there on that cross, he cried to his father, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Just for that moment of time, that moment of eternity. The father looked away from the son that he loved and the son that he adored, the son that had always been close to him. He did that for us, for you and for me. The Father looked away for that moment for us that we may become the friends of God. That we might be able to declare today, I know his eye is on me because his eye is on the little sparrow. This morning, if you don't have that special relationship where you have that confidence in knowing that God is with you, I invite you to receive Christ as your savior. He paid your debt already. You could not pay it yourself. But then on that cross, he died that Friday. And there, God's justice was satisfied. They put him in a grave, a borrowed grave. He stayed there for three days. But on the third day morning, he got up. And that reminds me that even though the spell will fall to the ground, it won't stay there because early one morning, God's going to call for it. I don't know if God will really call for the birds, but I know he'll call for us because his words say so. The old preachers used to preach as I come to my clothes. My body may be going back to the dust of the ground, maybe part of a brick, part of a stone, part of a tree. May even be cast into the sea of this old world. But when he calls me, I will come forth. And when he calls for those in Christ, they will come forth. So I invite you this morning to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and develop that close and intimate relationship with him so that you can have the confidence of knowing. Come hell, come high water, that his eye is on you and he never sleeps and never slumber. You may come and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're out there and you want to receive Christ, just use the chat function and let us know. Unmute yourself, wave your hand, do something, let us know. Because today is the day of salvation and today may be your day. Glory, hallelujah. Let the church say, Amen. Why 
should I feel discouraged? And why should my shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long from heaven and home? When Jesus sins my portion a constant friend is he his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me I sing because I'm happy and I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because. I'm happy and I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches.